as we move forward with all the future of global warming and all the things that are talking about environmental impact. There's so much of it that's going to be driven by genetics. One of the projects I'm working on is to look for associations between bits of DNA that we have and various things like, will we get a disease? Will we not get a disease? Will a drug work well for us? Will a drug not work well for us? Big science, big data have always been very interesting. It's only been within the last probably five years that it's really become a passion. When I hear big data, I think of hundreds of thousands of individuals and the DNA for those individuals comprising billions of bits of information. Here at Microsoft Research, we're not only developing these algorithms to analyze this massive amount of data, but we also have the infrastructure to do the computations that would ordinarily take years in just a few hours. FastLMM is a new algorithm that we produced last year. When we run a genome association study, we have to run lots and lots and lots of comparisons. We use data from the Wellcome Trust study of the British population, which encompassed seven diseases, bipolar disease, coronary artery disease, hypertension, Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and type 1 and type 2 diabetes. We are running roughly 500,000 SNPs by roughly 15,000 individuals. And that's a huge matrix. So we have 62 million SNP pairs by 15,000 uh, people we want to do the analysis on. We can then send all the information out into the cloud. We can run on 27,000 CPUs. And then we can have the results. Big computing is really where the problem that you're trying to solve is too large from the point of view of how much resources it would need or would run for too long to run on a small number of machines. Here we have four HPC head nodes which we've set up with 16,000 cores each. I'm typing in my parametric sweep job. They've shown up in the HPC scheduler and it's now scheduling the Azure nodes. Each one of these boxes is a machine and you'll see the wave of activity as the scheduler starts the workload going. And if we were to watch this for 24 hours, it would stay pretty much exactly the same. And at that point, we will go and grab the data and bring it back down so we can analyze it. This project needed us to do about 125 compute years of work, and we wanted to get that work done in about three days. And to just dividing that out, you need a lot of resources to do that. We are taking on the challenge of taking what would be traditional high-performance computing, one of the hardest workloads to move to the cloud, and moving it to the cloud. With this new huge amount of data that's coming online, we're now able to find connections between our DNA and who we are that we could never find before. When I think about what I do and how it affects my kids in the future, it's astounding because I think computation and biology are moving forward together. We're gathering biological data at just exponential rates. The computer is helping us understand and gather data. So this is stuff that um, without the both the improvements in the algorithms that the Microsoft Research guys have come up with and the ability for us to provide the tens to hundreds of thousands of cores, is, would be, have been infeasible. It's very compute intensive, very memory intensive, uh, very CPU intensive, and it's making a real difference in the world. We're gaining lots more insight into what's going on in biology. Just about every day you turn on the radio and you hear about some new discovery about a gene that's associated with a form of cancer or a gene that's associated with some favorable reaction to a drug. This is what's coming from the genomics revolution.